Welcome to Eco Ask Why. This is a special Christmas episode. I'm so thankful that you're here. Hopefully everyone had a great Christmas. You're enjoying the holiday. You know, this week is a short week for many, uh, but there's still a lot that can be done before the end of the new year. And I wanted to share some things today. You know, I've been doing a lot of, of interviews lately and talking with a lot of people around procurement. And, you know, there's some things that I've learned from this specific group that we could apply moving forward that guarantee you will make an impact on you and your business, particularly going into next year. And now, you know, this time of year, it's a great time of year to consider your process, you know, what can be modified, maybe some, some, some adjustments that you want to make to move forward. That's going to make a big impact. Okay. So if you work in the world of industrial manufacturing or you serve that, you know, that you're going to see, Throughout, throughout this conversation, there are some things that I'm going to be able to apply no matter where you fall in line, okay? Whether you're in procurement, whether you're in engineering, whether uh, you're in distribution like we are here at ECO, okay? So I kind of have five areas that we're going to touch on today that hopefully, you know, again, short week, you, you, maybe you're listening to this on the treadmill or you're listening to this walking around the plant, or maybe you're just on, the, on your way to or from work and you were looking for some, some tips or some ideas, hopefully some of these will resonate with you. All right. So the very first one that I want to share with you guys is what can you automate? All right. Think about that. What can you automate? So we all have things that happen in our come across our desk or our email or whatever on a consistent basis, right? So think about that. You know, a lot of times when we're thinking automation, we're thinking from an industrial manufacturing standpoint for PLCs and sensors and things like that and, and actually automating the process to lines. But think about what can you automate in your personal process, okay? So if you're manually having to go out and extract data for, some re for, for a report or something like that on a daily basis, is there an opportunity for you to do a little work, to, to maybe lean in, ask some questions, and see if you can automate that and get that stuff manually pulled for you, okay? Because if, you, if you're doing it repetitive and you're having to do this manual uh, entry or things like that on, on a consistent basis, it's worth taking the time to investigate, hey, is there a better, more efficient way to do it? Okay, and, these, and again, I talk to a lot of people in procurement, and they're always looking for ways to automate certain areas because they're trying to free up time to roll into the next problem. And we all have the next thing coming in our inbox. We all have the next issue that we need to be taken care of. So if you can find ways to automate the, the, those repetitive tasks, oh, that's going to set you so far ahead. You'll be so much in a better position moving forward. So really think about that. I mean, think about how if you're serving industrial manufacturing too, how can you automate notifications? You know, how many times do we have to go check up on stuff or just check in, right? Or do we get asked the status of something? If you're kind, if you're if you're if you're nodding your head right now, all right, is there an opportunity for you to to automate that process? Okay, and get ahead of it to be proactive in that, right? Now, I know everyone's systems are different. There's all different rest restrictions. Whether you have IT, OT, all these different things happening, but. It's worth having the question because I tell you one thing: I've met many IT and OT professionals, and they're willing to serve and step in and help. You just have to come in and, and actually lay out a problem with them and understand: okay, what are my limitations here? All right, what can the system actually do? All right, and what can it not do? All right, if it can do this. Could I possibly automate this area? And just having those conversations, I'll tell you what, you'll find that they were going to give you, as well as give them, ideas for improvements in the future. So there you go. Now, tip number one, what can you automate? Look for those areas. Number two, and yeah, if you're serving industrial manufacturing, try to find ways to remove friction. Okay, And I'm going to talk specifically around e-commerce and punch out. Okay, So if you're serving manufacturing, can you serve? Can you help them with e-commerce and punch out? Okay, so I, I, I interviewed Kurt Anderson. So go back and check that ep that episode out as well. And Kurt is the e-commerce guru. Okay, he he knows it all. He he's all about uh, connecting you know manufacturers to the people who need their products. Right. So when I was thinking of, and, and doing the research and thinking about the, the way that we're migrating our e-commerce platform at Eco, our punch out capabilities at Eco, and I see how that really connects with people when they need it the most. 
Okay. Because at the end of the day, we are a business, just like like you guys, like you are out there listening. We're a business. And there's only so much time in a day, right? And if we could be there to serve others when they need us the most, and this could be at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I had two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, whatever that time is, with the information that they need, right? The pricing, the availability, the technical specs, all that, that all that data, that's gonna serve them so well. So really what you need to be thinking about the friction that's in your process right now. If you're trying to help those in industrial manufacturing, where are the friction points? Can they only get a price if they speak to you and you alone? Because if they do, that's a friction point. That's a major that's a, that's a major opportunity for you right now to make an adjustment. Are you holding on to those cards for some reason? You have to let that stuff go. It's all about greasing that wheel and making it super easy. And when we think about punch out, we have several customers that we do a uh, punch out with. At that point, you've elevated to a whole new level. When I talk to those in procurement, the ones that, that are doing punch out, that's vault, that's a game changer. You're, you're, you've, you've gone from that level one procurement more to like level three, level four, right? So again, think about e-commerce punch out, these digital transformation areas of your business and utilize them. I've actually seen where people don't are, are, hold, are resistant from utilizing those types of, of systems because they want to, you know, protect in some ways their business. Look, lean in technology and, and technology enablement. That is big. And as you serve more and more, particularly industrial manufacturers in the future, you're going to have to have those types of services and capabilities to be able to, to meet their needs. All right, number three, I want you to think about how you can utilize data and search for insights that maybe the, the people that you're serving haven't considered, okay? Now, what am I talking about here? Primarily, no one, and I mean no one, takes the time to look back and truly analyze their business, okay? Now, what you're going to be looking for here is that you need to get really niche down. So, because we've got to remember, the riches are in the niches. That, that, is, that is truth behind that, that saying, okay? So, get out. See if you can, what, what items can be consolidated. What items can be converted. Maybe you look for repetitive items. You're looking for patterns, okay? And there may be seasonal patterns as well. You know, this time of year, during the first quarter, we noticed that, that, that the projects tend to utilize this information a lot more, so we're going, to, we're going. We're going to step that up, right? Or the third quarter, we can forecast this because once you start and you and you get into where you're having forecasting in from conversations, and you're and you're, you, you know, you're you're that level of engagement with the the customer, the one that you're serving. That's a game changer, complete game changer. And that's where you move from just a supplier to a partner. And that's what it's all about. We're trying to have partnerships out there. But there is data. There is so much data moving around the industrial manufacturing plant. And if you're serving industrial manufacturing, you have a huge data set that you can offer them that they may not even have considered. So seriously, take your time. Look back. You're going to have to get down to SKU level, particularly if, we're, if you're uh, serving you know, at that standpoint. And and take the time to understand what they're buying, why, and how you can help give them insight into their behaviors and their habits moving forward. Okay? So, again, utilize data. Remember, there's riches in the niches. So there's some serious uh, action you can take right there. All right, the fourth area that I wanted to, to, to share with you, with you all, is, a, is around freight and getting creative with freight. Okay, so I was talking with several procurement. And they were like, you know what? You know, everyone, we all, we all know about the supply chain woes, and we get it. But there's still an opportunity. The best suppliers are being creative, and they're thinking about how they can serve serve us with freight options. And I'll go back to my days of selling, and I remember very vividly of. I always assumed the worst when when I was when I was trying to to serve my customers. So far as I needed to get the, the I needed to get them that product there the fastest, and oftentimes I would just assume that, and I would just roll and you you know what whatever it takes get it there. If we got to do UPS red next whatever next day same day, do I need to take it there tonight? Whatever we got it's all about getting 
getting it to them right then. And while there is a definite, definite need for, for customer service and having an extremely high level, there's also an opportunity anytime you have uh, an order or time for a fulfillment like this, have the conversation and be honest. Because if you can find ways to consolidate freight and reduce their freight bill, right, and still meet the requirement, while they may like to have it next Thursday, in reality, they could have it two weeks from now and save freight and still meet their, their, their ultimate need of what that product is needed. I guarantee you they're going to take advantage of that. They're going to jump all over. Yep, that's exactly what when I need it, okay? So, again, don't go in just assuming that, that you know, we have to get everything here next day. Take the time. Ask the questions around freight because they may have more flexibility than you thought. And I often found this out, and usually when I found this out, it was probably too late most of the time. You know, I've already gone through the, the extra hoops and things like that. But get creative. You know, there's opportunities to get creative out here, particularly around freight, and that is a value-added item. So if, you, if you're finding yourself, you're shipping something to end users or customers, find ways to get creative on that freight. And I guarantee you, you're going to change again. It's all about moving from just a supplier to a partner. Number five, okay, I want to share this one. And this is the big one. This is the fifth one. I, sh- I saved it for last. I saved it for last for a reason. We have to get better no matter what position that you find yourself serving industrial manufacturing at asking better questions. That's it. Now, it, from all the interviews I've done over three years at Vico, that's why, and talking with the top suppliers and manufacturers, you know, and I'm having very open, honest conversations very transparent conversations as well. It, it takes a certain level of genuine inquisitiveness, okay, and willingness to be vulnerable to, to really take conversations and relationships to the next level. And too often we're worried about how we're going to be perceived. And I remember I, this was me. You know, I didn't want to tell any of the people that I was serving, particularly my my, my good customers, uh, wo- woes or or items that we have concern with as a supplier with our vendors. I don't want to tell them that because that may show a kink in my, my iron. But I tell you what, as soon as I put that to the side and focus just on serving them, you know what? We're having issues with this, with, with the delivery on this item. And I'm sorry about that, but I've done some research and here are two other options that you may want to consider those conversations and, and that that elevates a whole new level of relationship. Okay, so so stop think trying to look good and just serve, serve. Seek first to understand what they're trying to solve, and then address that. Once when you do, once you understand that, then you can address it at a whole a whole lot different level, particularly a level of confidence and humility that's going to resonate. Okay, so really think about that, but and it. It comes to the art of asking better questions. You know, as you go go forward, think about when the last time you went to a doctor. So when a doctor just walk walk into the doctor's office and you've done all the pre-checks and you've done all this and you're finally sitting there, you're waiting for the time where you get to see him or her, they're gonna walk in and and be able to to have your doctor's appointment. Now they just walk in and say hi and start writing, rip it off, rip it on a prescription pad. Well, they don't do that anymore. But listen, they're, they're typing. So they're just typing and say, okay, all right, Chris, uh, I just prescribed you this, this, and this. You can go pick it up at your, at your pharmacy. Have a great day. They turn around and walked out. I would be completely just taken aback. Like, well, what just happened? Well, how often does that, that exact scenario really unfold in industrial manufacturing, particularly in around procurement? It's more often than you think because we go straight to selling versus asking better questions. Now, I get it. Sometimes better questions are going to slow us down. You know, if I ask too many questions, maybe I'll uncover something that, that, that I, don't, I can't provide. You're right. You do run that risk. But if you don't ask better questions, you're going to run the risk of just being just another me too supplier and just and falling into those same old traps. And I want to help you. Eco asked why. We want to help you from, from getting past that. So, again, if you're serving industrial manufacturing, ask better questions. 
And by the way, this is this is a freebie. This is this is you can call this five B, or, or or you can call this an asterisk number six. This is a bonus. Lose the slide decks, except for extremely special circumstances. Slide decks are just way overutilized. Okay, eyeball to eyeball, that works best. Now, if you need to showcase something, demos, actual demos work wonderful. <laughs> Labs, tours. Anytime you get hands-on with equipment, now I know there are circumstances where, you know what, a slide deck is definitely needed. But I get at the end of the day, the best presentations I've ever done, if I needed to actually show something, was to actually log into whatever that system was and just u- utilize the system in the in the moment. Now, I know that runs a risk because not everybody can do that. And then you have to run that risk. What the system is, is having issues when you're in that moment, I get it. But I guarantee you, if you take that time and do that and show that level of transparency, transparency that is going to really impact the, your relationship at the end. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So I hope those five help. You know, let's think about, let's just do a quick recap here. What can you automate? And again, personal automation, not just equipment. What can you automate in your personal process? Number two, what can you do to remove friction with e-commerce and punch-out solutions? Think about that big time. And if you if you have that offering, start having that conversation. Number three, how can you utilize data and look for insights that haven't been considered before? Because you have data. I guarantee you, you have data. How can you utilize it to actually make an impact? Number four, get creative with freight. Don't forget that freight is a real cost that impacts the bottom line of every industrial manufacturer out there. What can you do to impact that? And number five, the most important, ask better questions. That's it. Ask better questions. And this takes practice. You're going to have to take some time. You're going to need to study on this. You're going to have to think about your process. You're going to have to think, okay, what do I need to do to slow myself down? Okay, because if you find yourself automatically pulling out a brochure or trying to pull up a slide deck or just trying to go to that, that feature and benefit pitch, slow down. What questions do I need to ask to make sure what I bring forth is actually addressing the problem? Okay, and I know that sounds super simple, but it's missed so many times. Once you have clarity and you can speak to that problem at a level that, that nobody else is, then all of a sudden, again, you move from that supplier to more of a partner. And that's what it's all about. We need partners out here in industrial manufacturing. So, look, you can check out a lot of the ways that Eco, we're trying to stay committed to that people and ideas over products by visiting the link in the show notes here. Everyone, check that out. Uh, we've had three years in a row of bringing content to you. you know, and hopefully, you know, week in, week out, we're bringing people and ideas. And we're hoping that that connects the dots on some of these these industry items that are just out there. They, they're mat- they matter a lot. They really do from industrial automation to power to controls to procurement, all these different areas. We know that it impacts each and every one of you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening for all these years. Uh, we're going to be have a lot of things coming out in 2023 that hopefully serves you well uh, also. Uh, again, if you're liking Eco Ask Why, we would ask. Give us a rating. Write a review. That stuff really does make an impact. Okay? Drop me a line. Shoot us a note over at Eco Ask Why. If there's a topic that you would like for us to address, send us a note. Okay, my... My, my email, my link is in the show notes. You can send that to me directly. Would love to hear from you. Okay, Chris, we'd like to hear from you talk about this. Well, th- our plants is suffering this. Talk about this some. I guarantee you, we will do that research. We will ask the questions and we will answer them. I really want to be doing more question and answer style as we move forward. So hopefully uh, you, you bring the, the questions to us. We will address them and move it forward. So again, they're, they're your five. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. Come back next week because we do have a, a, a New Year's episode that is going to be a little bit different twist. Something I, want, I think you're going to really enjoy as I try to, we'll try to bring you some ideas to think about your work environment moving into 2023. And, and there's, there's some things that we can do in our work environment that's going to really make a big impact. And I'm going to share the story of, uh, 
the studio that I'm sitting in right now. So yeah, come come back next week. Again, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Enjoy the rest of this week. For those that are out there working hard, stay working hard. If you're working in industrial manufacturing, thank you. You are doing work that matters. Never question that for a second. The work that you do matters. We need more, quite frankly. We need all the products we can made right here. And anytime we see a manufacturing plant go up and we can be part of that and we can serve that, that this brings so much joy to the eco team. And I can't thank you again for taking the time to listen to Eco Ask Why. Enjoy each and every week being able to share messages with you all. So come back next week. Enjoy the rest of your, your Christmas. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. W-H-Y dot com.